Hi again. In this video, as well as the next few videos, we're going to take a look at a selection of the shaders included with TextMesh Pro. Now, in this video, we're going to focus on the mobile sign distance field shader. So let's select our object. Now, first thing, hopefully you've already watched the TextMesh Pro video, The Basics, so you should be familiar with the editor panel that's right up here. Uh, if you haven't looked at that video, I encourage you to do so before taking a look at the shaders. So let me collapse that since uh, we want to focus on the shaders. First, uh, where are the shaders located? Well, if we open the shader panel, you can see the list of all the shaders in Unity. And then you can see here there's a section for TextMesh Pro. And in there right now, we're interested in the mobile version of the distance field shader, which is the one we have here. Now, each of the shader panels are collapsible. So, you know, you can collapse them and expand them. First off is we're going to take a look at the face option. Uh, and we're actually going to zoom in a little bit so we can see uh, better what's going on. So in terms of the face option, color affects, basically it's the material color. It tints all the faces by that color. This is not the vertex attribute. The vertex attribute is controlled in the editor panel. So this uh, tints um, the material color and we obviously can control the transparency of it or the alpha Now softness can be added. So if we take a look we can see softness here and Then dilate uh, what it does is it basically dilates or inflates The text itself. This is sort of how bold is created But not only can we inflate it, but we can dilate it in a negative way so or shrink it now depending on the font that you're using you know your range of how much you can shrink or grow the text will vary so it's up to you to play with that next we're going to take a look at the outline now the outline um, is added on the edge of the font so if I choose, before I show color, I'll add some thickness, otherwise there's nothing for us to see. So if I select thickness, you'll see that the thickness is added or expands both inward and outward on the outline itself. Okay, so now let's pick our color. So we can choose any color. Okay, and we can control the transparency as well. Pretty straightforward, huh? Okay, next, let me get rid of this. Next is the underlay panel. So let me expand it. Now, first thing you'll notice is if I play with dilate or anything, nothing seems to happen. That's because this panel, although it's expanded, it's disabled right now. I need to enable it for the features to happen. Now, why is that? Well, this uh, mobile distance field shader is a high performance shader and it's designed where performance is most critical on mobile devices and so on and so forth which is why it has a limited feature set now the shader is using well all of our shaders are using shader keywords which enable us to create variants of that shader which means when underlay is disabled that part of the code is actually not in the shader so Unity compiles one version of the shader without the underlay and one version of, of the shader with underlay. So that way we can maximize performance. So if I enable it, now let's take a look at what underlay is. So what underlay is or does is it adds a duplicate of the object underneath it. So for example, if I move the offset, we can see that there's a duplicate of that text underneath of the color that's selected here. Okay. Let me leave it at black. So I can use that to create or simulate a shadow like so. And I can, for example, add softness to my shadow. And I could shrink it by using dilate or inflate it. So this is a very effective way uh, and, and very efficient way to create a simulated shadow. Okay, and I didn't show the transparency, but if I go here, I can also control the transparency of that shadow to make it like super subtle, for example. Okay. Another use for this, uh, let me make this back to fully opaque again. Another example is 
when you're using tiny text or small text and it's going to be rendered fairly small on screen like here I'm not sure how the visual quality is going to be on YouTube but if you shrink the size of the text there's a point where you're trying to increase the contrast well your initial instinct might be to add an outline to it so for example let me pick this smaller text here and add an outline now if I add an outline the challenge is that the outline is added both inwards and outwards which it actually shrinks the amount of like white area that we've got or the surface area of it so when the font gets smaller this doesn't necessarily help adding contrast whereas if I was to use underlay and use the offset at zero zero and inflate the text behind it that gives me a nice sort of contour without affecting the surface area of the font itself and that's actually a nice way to add contrast to tiny little text and in terms of performance underlay is very good performance wise which is why it's part of this shader um, so let me go back to this upper text here and enable underlay so we see what it looks like and that's what it is now um, most of these or pretty much all of these uh, shader properties can be animated through text uh, through scripts um, some of them have interdependencies on each other so whenever you're gonna go and 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 change the properties of the shaders just um, if you see some strange behaviors uh, it's a good good idea to post on the forum because some of them are interconnected not necessarily in this shader but in subsequent shaders that we're gonna see so this concludes this video for the mobile distance field shader. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna take a look at the normal distance field shader, i.e. the non-mobile version of it. Thanks for watching.